na kama yuko mtu ambaye nimesema chochote ambacho kimemuisa roho yake unisamee Robert John Ouko na hapa kwamba nitakuwa mwaminifu kwa Jamhuri ya Kenya na kuitumikia kwa moyo wangu wote na kwamba nitahifadhi mujibu wa sheria iliyowekwa ewe Mwenyezi Mungu nisaidie Kenya has experienced a high number of unresolved murder cases leaving families and friends of the victims in agony and despair Despite efforts by the Kenyan authorities to solve these crimes, many cases remain unsolved and the perpetrators continue to walk free. This investigation aims to shed light on some of the most notable unsolved murder cases in Kenya and to explore the factors hindering their resolution. Another high-profile unsolved murder case is the high killing of a prominent lawyer, Huili Kimani, his client Josephat Mwenda and their taxi driver Joseph Mwiruri. The trio was abducted and murdered in June 2016, allegedly by police officers while pursuing a case involving police brutality. The case drew international attention and led to protests across the country. Other unresolved murder cases in Kenya include the killing of human rights activist Caroline Mwatha, businessman Jacob Juma, University student Sharon Otieno and IEBC official Chris Musando among many others. These cases have remained unsolved with no progress made in apprehending the perpetrators. In this investigation, we look on the top most high-end murder mysteries. Julie Ward In 1988, Julie Ward, a 28-year-old British tourist, was found dead in the Maasai Mara National Reserve in Kenya. Her body had been burned and her throat had been cut. The case remains unsolved with no one ever being brought to justice for her murder. Me, Robert John Ouko na hapa kwamba nitakuwa mwaminifu kwa Jamhuri ya Kenya. Dr. Robert Ouko, prominent Kenyan politician was found dead In 1990, his body was discovered in a remote area near his home and he had been shot and burned. The case remains a mystery with no one ever being convicted for his murder. J.M. Kariuki was a Kenyan politician who was murdered in 1975. His body was found in a forest and he had been shot several times. The case remains unsolved with many speculating that he was killed for his outspoken criticism of corruption in the government. Father John Anthony Kaiser Father Anthony John was an American missionary who was found dead in 2000. His body was discovered near his home in western Kenya and he had been shot in the head. The case remains unsolved with no one ever being brought to justice for his murder. Alexander Monson Alexander Monson was a British man who was found dead in his cell at a police station in Diani, Kenya in the year 2012. He had been arrested for possession of cannabis but his family believes that he was beaten to death by police officers. The case remains unsolved with no one ever being convicted for his murder. Sharon Otieno A Kenyan student who was found dead in 2018. She was seven months pregnant at the time of her murder and her body was found in a forest. She had been stabbed eight times and her unborn child had been removed from her womb. The case gained national attention and a prominent politician was eventually charged with her murder, although he was acquitted. George Muchai A Kenyan politician who was murdered in 2015. He and several of his aides were shot and killed on their way home from a political rally. The case remains unsolved with no one ever being convicted for the murders. Jacob Juma, a prominent Kenyan businessman, was murdered in 2016. His body was found in his car on the side of a road and he had been shot several times. 
the case remains unsolved, with no one ever being brought to justice for his murder. Case 1 Willie Kimani's murder, the Mavoku 3. In June 2016, the brutal murder of a human rights lawyer Willie Kimani, his client Joseph Tumwenda, and their taxi driver Joseph Mwiruri sent shockwaves throughout Kenya and the international community. Kimani was a dedicated lawyer who had been representing Mwenda in a case against the police. Mwenda had accused the police of shooting him and leaving him for dead, and Kimani had taken up his case, hoping to bring justice to his client. However, it seems that Kimani's pursuit of justice may have ultimately led to his death. The three men disappeared on June 23, 2016, after leaving a court hearing in Mavoko, a town on the outskirts of Nairobi. Their bodies were found a week later, dumped in a river in the neighboring Machakos County. The brutal nature of their death sent shockwaves through Kenya's legal community and sparked protests and calls for justice. As details of the case began to emerge, it became clear that Kimani had been targeted because of his work as a human rights lawyer. He had been receiving threatening messages and had even reported being followed in the days leading up to his disappearance. According to witnesses, the men had been abducted by police officers and taken to a local police station where they were tortured before being killed. The case quickly gained international attention with the human rights groups and foreign governments condemning the brutal murders and calling for a full investigation. In response, the Kenyan government set up a task force to investigate the killings, which ultimately led to the arrest and prosecution of several police officers. However, many questions still remain unanswered about the case. It is unclear who gave the orders for the men to be adopted, tortured and killed. The Kenyan government has denied any involvement in the killings and there are suspicions that the police officers may have been acting on behalf of more powerful individuals or groups. The case highlights the dangers faced by human rights defenders and lawyers in Kenya, who often face threats, harassment and even violence for standing up to those in power. Despite the arrests and prosecutions, many fear that the root causes of the murders have not been addressed and that the perpetrators may still be at large. The tragic death of Willie Kimani, Joseph Mwenda, and Joseph Miruri is a stark reminder of the importance of defending human rights and the rule of law and the dangers faced by those who do so. The international community must continue to pressure the Kenyan government to hold those responsible accountable and to support the efforts of human rights defenders and lawyers working to promote justice and accountability in Kenya. Case 2 Sharon Otieno's murder. Sharon Otieno, a 26 year old Kenyan student and activist, was brutally murdered on September 3rd, 2018, in what became one of the most high profile cases in the country's recent history. Her death shocked the nation and prompted widespread outrage, with many demanding justice for the young woman whose life was cut short in such a horrific manner. The circumstances surrounding Sharon's death were murky from the outset. She was seven months pregnant at the time of her murder, and her body was found in a forest near Oyugis, a small town in western Kenya. She had been stabbed eight times and her unborn child had been removed from her womb. The prime suspects in the case were Governor Okot Obado of Migori County, where Sharon lived and two of his aides. Sharon had reportedly been in a relationship with the governor and had claimed that he was the father of her unborn child. The governor denied this and his aides were also quick to distance themselves from any involvement in the murder. As the investigation progressed, more details emerged that pointed to the governor's possible involvement in the crime. Sharon had reportedly been abducted by unknown assailants while on her way to meet the governor's aide, Michael Oyamo. 
Oyamo later admitted to being present during the abduction, but claimed that he was not involved in Sharon's murder. Investigators also found evidence that linked the governor to the crime. DNA samples taken from the fetus found in Sharon's womb matched samples taken from the governor, indicating that he was indeed the father. Furthermore, phone records showed that the governor had been in contact with Sharon on the day of her murder and that he had made several calls to his aides around the same time. Despite this evidence, the governor continued to deny any involvement in the crime. He was eventually arrested and charged with murder, along with his two aides. The trial was a high-profile affair, with Sharon's family and supporters demanding justice for the young woman who had been so brutally taken from them. In November 2019, the governor was acquitted of all charges with the judge citing insufficient evidence to convict him. This decision was met with widespread criticism, with many accusing the governor of using his political influence to escape justice. Sharon's family and supporters have continued to push for justice in the years since her murder. They have called for a new investigation into the case and for the governor and his aides to be brought to justice. While the case remains unsolved, Sharon's memory lives on as a symbol of the struggle for justice and equality in Kenya. Case 3. The Murder of Masi Keino In the wee hours of 18th July 2007, mutilated body of an unknown woman in her mid-twenties was discovered along with Yaki Way. She was later identified as Masi Keino, master's in journalism student at the University of Nairobi. Hours before her body was found, she had been in company of her friend in an evening party hosted by a local politician William Kambogo in Wasini Luxury Apartments. However, at around 2 a.m. in the morning, she got drunk and disorderly. She later got into an argument with her host who physically assaulted and kicked her out of the party. What happened next is still shrouded with a mystery. Immediately after Marcy and her friend left, she stepped back to get her pass and when she came back, Marcy was gone. Her body was later discovered lying on the road badly mutilated. One witness recalled to have seen her past the security gate with three unknown men in pursuit. At around the same time, a motorist driving down the same road is reported to have seen a desperate girl with a similar description waving at the passing motorists. Being drunk, the police theorized Keino staggered on to an oncoming traffic and was killed by a hit-and-run motorist. This theory would have put the matter to rest had it not been for one major setback. Her brain was virtually missing on the accident scene and the pathologist report failed to conclusively determine the cause of her death owing to massive trauma. During an inquiry, a motorist testified to have seen a suspicious Mercedes-Benz driven on the wrong side of the road with human legs protruding beneath the car and swerved to avoid the dumped body. He took the registration details of the car and reported to the police. The car was later traced and dusted but no sign of foul play was found. The circumstances behind her death are still unsolved. Case 3 the mysterious killing of Zebedeo Minor. Zebedeo needs no introduction in police circles as his sheer brutality of strangling, shooting and mutilating Mungiki outlaws was well known and it's safe to assume he was one of the most brutal police officers in Kenya's history, a title only rivaled by Patrick Shaw. In his heydays, he headed the Kwekwe Police Squad, an infamous police branch that was primarily set up counter the spread of Mungiki who were responsible for extortions, kidnappings, massacres and occasional gunfights with the police. At its peak, their population was estimated to be approximately 500,000 and growing fast. Following public outcry, the government swung into action and the dreaded Kwekwe police squad was formed. 
Its activities were shrouded in secrecy and soon, mutilated bodies of Mungiki suspects began popping up in different parts of the country. Several other Mungiki members were arrested and vanished without a trace. One such incident was the abduction and disappearance of Mungiki treasurer Ruo Kimani in 2007. Kimani had just acquitted for his roles with the sect when he was accosted by plain cloth police officers. He was bungled into a car and driven off to an unknown location. His fate is still unknown. His disappearance continued to baffle the state before a former Kwekwe squad member confessed to have tortured and killed him in a forest and his body set alight under Minas watch. The exact scene was lost to time. Zebedeo continued illicit fear among his colleagues and the Mungiki members alike before he was gunned by one of his juniors under controversial circumstances. On August 3, 2013, Zebedeo alongside his officers went to Kitui, town on a trail of a kidnapped girl from Nairobi. After tracking the phone used by the kidnappers, they laid in wait and soon identified two passing men as the culprit. He approached and realizing they had been cornered, a scuffle ensured and Miner withdrew his pistol and fired into the air to deter a curious group of onlookers. In the midst of the struggle, one of his juniors opened fire on him twice, once on the buttocks and on the stomach. He died a few hours later. As of this writing, no conviction has been made. Number 4. Abud Rogo Rogo needs no introduction among Islamic circles in the country. Known for his controversial preaching and radicalization of youth in Mombasa, he had a long list of run-ins with the law in his lifetime. Rogo first caught the attention of the police when he was linked to a twin bomb blast in Kenya and Tanzania in 1998 that left more than 250 people dead. Four years later, he was arrested for his connection in Kikambala bombing incident that left 13 people dead. During the course of investigation, it was revealed a group of newly arrived Israelites were at the center of the target but the case fell apart due to lack of evidence. Only three Israelites and ten local entertainers were killed in the blast, but it wasn't done yet. Abu Drogo became much vocal against government move of dispatching defense forces into Somalia to counter the insurgency issues that was threatening to spill into the country. Though he clearly knew of the risks involved, he wasn't deterred and soon propaganda materials of his teachings began popping up in various towns drumming support for the terror groups in Somali. His house was subsequently raided and several rounds of ammunition were found along with rifles, grenades and detonators, an accusation he vehemently denied and instead accused the police of planting the incriminating evidence in his house. He was charged but released on bail. On 27th August 2012, his van was blocked by an unmarked car as he drove his wife to hospital and sprayed with bullets. He died instantly after taking 17 shots. His wife sustained injuries to the legs while his daughter escaped unhurt. Shortly after the shooting, angry mobs touched churches and engaged the police for two days before calm was finally restored. One person was killed in the fracas and several injured. As of this writing, no arrest and conviction has been done. Case 5. J.M. Kariuki Well known, J.M. Kariuki, a Kenyan politician, was murdered on the night of March 2, 1975. His body was found a few days later in a thicket in Ngong Hills, just outside Nairobi. The circumstances surrounding his death remain a mystery to this day and it is widely believed that his killing was politically motivated. At the time of his death, Karuki was a popular and outspoken member of parliament known for his criticism 
of the government and his calls for an end to corruption and tribalism in politics. He was a member of the opposition party, Kenya People's Union KPU, which had been banned by the government. The events leading up to Kariuki's murder began when he made a speech in parliament on February 26, 1975, in which he accused senior government officials of embezzling public funds. The speech was widely reported in the media and it infuriated the government, which saw Kariuki as a threat to its power. On the night of March 2nd, Kariuki was seen living a bar in Nairobi Central Business District. He was never seen alive again. His disappearance sparked a nationwide search, and his body was eventually found on March 6th in a thicket in Ngong Hills. The circumstances of Kariuki's death were suspicious from the outset. His body showed signs of torture, and it was clear that he had been killed in a brutal manner. The government initially denied any involvement in his murder, but the investigation soon revealed that the security forces had been monitoring Kariuki's movements in the days leading up to his death. Many believe that Kariuki's murder was part of a wider conspiracy by the government to silence its critics and maintain its grip on power. Number 6. Chris Musando Chris Musando, a very recent case, is a top official at the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission IBC in Kenya, who is found dead on July 31st, 2017. His murder sent shockwaves throughout the country and raised concerns about the credibility of the upcoming presidential elections, which were scheduled for August 8, 2017. Msando was the Commission's Head of Information, Communication and Technology and he played a crucial role in ensuring the integrity of the electronic voting system. His murder therefore raised suspicions of foul play and sparked a massive manhunt for his killers. Initial reports indicated that Msando had been tortured before he was killed and his body showed signs of strangulation and severe injuries. His car was found abandoned on a roadside and his body was discovered in a forested area on the outskirts of Nairobi. Investigators immediately began combing through CCTV footage and interviewing witnesses, hoping to identify the perpetrators. The case was handed over to the Directorate of Criminal Investigations DCI and the National Intelligence Service NIS was also brought in to assist with the investigation. As the investigation progressed, several theories emerged about the motive behind Msanto's murder. Some speculated that it was politically motivated, while others suggested that it was related to his work at the IEBC. The police eventually made a breakthrough in the case when they arrested two suspects. Despite the arrests, the motive behind Musando's murder remained unclear. Some speculated that it was linked to the elections, while others suggested that it was related to his work at the IEBC. Justice may one day be served from Sandu's family and the people of Kenya. This is part one.